Hello there, we are back with another in-painting tutorial. And today we are going to speak about five things you can do in in-painting that will take hours in Photoshop or any other image manipulation tool. I did an anime tutorial regarding in-painting before, but this time we'll be handling realistic art. Let's go! I'm currently doing a course on the Focus Web UI for people who want a more simpler version of the Automatic 1111's Web UI. It is completely beginner friendly and teaches everything from prompting, text to image generation, styles, in painting, control net, face swapping, and literally every part of the Focus Web UI. Check it out if you're interested. All right, to start in painting, you first need to go to the Image to Image tab. Tap Generation, and then go to the In-Painting tab right here. Now for the In-Painting, the model that I've used is called an Epic Realism Pure Evolution V5. You can get this model by going to the Civet AI page in the link down below, and then going to the Pure Evolution V5 In-Painting section, and then downloading this model. The reason why this model is good is because they are specifically designed for In-Painting, and you can say that they generally produce better results compared to using a normal model. Right, so the image I'm going to load is simple, has proper lighting, and has the ability to be better manipulated. Everyone should know how to load an image by now, so I have loaded an image of a celebrity, and we will be manipulating this image through this tutorial. Changing dress. Alright, let's start with a basic example. Let's say I want to change her shirt. Okay, so to do that, first select the image and then scroll down. And you can see this little pencil icon thing right here. Click on it to increase and decrease the size of the brush. This is the brush we'll use for in-painting. I'm going to choose a slightly larger brush size, and then I'm going to draw the shape of a shirt from her shoulder like this. One of the best tips that I could give is to first draw the outline for the in-painting image and then you can kind of fill everything inside using a larger brush. Once you have selected the area you want to paint the shirt, scroll down and you can see that there are two resize options right here. There you can see that we can define width and height. So always make sure that the weight and the height is similar to this image because otherwise it's going to produce very, very inconsistent results. Rather than manually checking the size of the image, you can just simply click on this arrow right here and it will automatically adjust the sizes to match the image. Now in the prompt section, I'm going to type what I need. I'm going to need a red shirt. So we're going to keep all the rest of the settings the same and then we're going to hit generate. We got an awesome result from our first try. So you can see that her existing dress was replaced by a nice, beautiful red dress, and it's two to three hours of Photoshop work saved by just three minutes or even less. If you get a different color shirt, you can easily increase the weight of the prompt. I did that by selecting the text and pressing Control and the up arrow key. Hit Generate, and you can see it focuses on a different color. Let me increase that to 1.5 so that the color gets more emphasized. And now we are back with the red color. This way, you can manipulate the image any way you want. You can change it to a crop top, a beachwear, or anything you prefer. Just make sure to select the proper area to be manipulated, and not just to select the area you want to paint over. If I just draw like the area that I want to cover for a swimsuit, I'll get something like this, which is pretty horrible. So always make sure to cover the entire area that you need to manipulate. Adding and removing objects. So to add your resulting image back to the in-painting tab, you don't need to manually save and load it again. You can go to this little icon right here. Click on it, and it will automatically load into your in-painting window. Adding accessories or adding something to the image is very simple. Just like you drew the dress, you can draw what you want. In this case, I'll do something very simple like sunglasses. I draw the shape of the sunglasses, write the prompt for sunglasses, and hit generate. And voila! You can see now she's got sunglasses, and it blends perfectly with her face and her hair. Now, how do you do the opposite? How do you remove an object? Usually in Photoshop, you'll need a tool like the spot healing brush, if it is something small, or need to crop, mask, and do a lot if it is something big. In in-painting, the process is simple. Let's say I want to remove her earrings. 
I draw over the earring, and then from the mask content tab, I select latent nothing. This creates an empty latent space, or in simple terms, an empty space over the selected area, which also effectively removes the object. Changing face. Changing and blending new faces to other images takes hours in Photoshop, but in InPainting, you can do it with InPainting and one simple extension. So if I scroll down below, you can see I have an extension called Roop. I did a detailed tutorial of this before, so if you're interested, make sure to check it out. But to install this, go down below and click on the Roop extension link. From there onwards, select the page URL, go to Extensions tab, go to Install from URL option, and paste the link there and install it manually. Once you restart the web UI, you'll get something like this. Now select the face area of our in-painting image. You already know how to do this. Then select the image you want to swap the face with in here. I've provided detailed guidelines on how to select a better image in my previous tutorial. Click on this area to load the image and you can pretty much keep these settings the same. Make sure to click the enable checkbox. Now hit the generate button. Make sure the prompt section is empty. You can see her face was immediately swapped, but it feels a little protruded. Let's keep the sunglasses on. So add the word sunglass to the prompt and regenerate, and we get a nice face swap. Face isn't the only thing you can change. Let's say you want to change her hair. Simply type the hairstyle you want, hit generate, and you can see how it's changed. So after a few tries, I generated a perfect ponytail picture with her face swapped. Changing background. Now you can obviously guess how we're going to change the background, but don't you think that is hard? If you want to change the background, then you'd have to normally select the area outside the image slowly like this. Make sure you cover even the small areas between her arms and her waist and basically do it the hard way. But there is an easy way. First, select the in paint not masked option from here. Then make sure to select the entire image. Select a bigger brush and paint over the entire image. Now type beach and hit generate. By selecting the in paint not masked option, we are telling Stable Diffusion to in paint the entire area except the area we have selected. So now you can see there is something that resembles a beach. One thing to note here is to make sure your background matches the current background in some way. For example, my background is blue, so something like a beach can be easily generated. But if we generate a desert, it's going to look horrible. This is also a good time to learn about denoising strength. Scroll down below, and you can see an option called denoising strength. This controls how much your in-painted result resembles the original result. For example, if I set this to a lower value like 0.1, you can see the area barely gets in-painted but let's say you increase the value to something like 0.9 and you can see it uses more effort and changes that particular area a lot. I can also control the sampling steps right here to see how much processing power in painting gives us. A higher step count between 30 to 45 will give us stronger results than a lower value. Now it's perfect. And if you're still annoyed about this little house right here, you can paint over it. Select Latent Nothing and remove it easily. Resizing Image Wait, even a 4-year-old can resize an image these days. I know that's what you're thinking, but how can you resize an image to a different aspect ratio while also not stretching it? Seems hard, doesn't it? Here's how you can do it with in-painting. Scroll down below to Width and Height, and let's say I want to make this image a little wider. So I'm going to add some width here. Now in the resize options up above, select resize and fill. And there you go. You can see extra details were added. The image wasn't stretched even by an inch and the details that were added match the details we already had. This way you can increase the size of the image in any direction without affecting the size of our subject. So those are the five tips of manipulating images in InPaint that would take hours in Photoshop. What you see right now is some images I've manipulated and some you could use for inspiration. 
As always, make sure to like if you learned something new and subscribe for content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.